you, Father. Hallelujah. And we give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 We bless your name, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. 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 We bless your name, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Spiritfield. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name.
what he'll do, that's what he'll do.
voice is in this building and worship him. Come on. All over the building. Stand up all over the building and keep that worship going. Come on, come on. Keep that worship going. I need more. Have a praise in your belly today. Come on. Whatever I need to do. My God, my God, my God. To get to you. Oh, yeah. Come on, out of your spirit. Out of your spirit is morning. Come on, lift your voice and talk to the Lord. And say, I need more. I need more. Come on. Somebody by the hand this morning. Grab somebody by the hand this morning. Come on, if you have blessed the blessing and, and God has graced you to be able to stand, stand. Come on and just grab hands. If you're sitting, grab hands. It don't matter what you're doing, but just grab hands. And we believe in the power of prayer and we believe in the prayer of agreement. And where there are two or three gathered in the name of the Lord, He comes down. And we know that His Spirit is in the room right now. We know that the presence of God is manifested among us today, and His desire is to heal. His desire is to restore. His desire is to impart something down on the inside of you. Something that will tear walls down. Something that will destroy you. Something that will turn it all around for you. So let us go before the throne of grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship you this morning. We adore you this morning. We exalt you this morning. We thank you for being God. We thank you for being the doctor. We thank you for being the lawyer. We thank you for being the just and the righteous judge. We thank you, Father God, that when you give the verdict, it is what you say it is. And it doesn't matter what men say, because when God speaks your word, Father, it is so. It is done. It is completed. For your Bible tells us that your word will not return void. It will prosper where you send it and accomplish its goal. So, Lord, we thank you for the fulfillment of your word in every mind and every body and every soul and every spirit in this building. I pray for power, love, and a sound mind. I pray for healing, deliverance, and freedom. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. We bind every spirit of darkness. We bind every spirit of the enemy. Say that the Lord God rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We drive back depression. We drive back anxiety. We drive out fear. We command doubt to go. We rebuke anger. We rebuke jealousy. We rebuke envy. We rebuke lust. We rebuke strife. We rebuke every evil spirit that's coming against the body of Christ. Satan, get out. Get thee behind us. We're more than conquerors. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray, God, that you would tear the walls down, that you would destroy yokes this morning, uproot every seed and every root that's not like you, oh God. May your presence, God, bring healing, signs, wonders, and miraculous miracles. May God, times of refreshing come from your presence, oh God. We choose to praise and to worship this morning, and we know you come in the midst of those who praise you. So, Father, I thank you. We praise you. We adore you. We accept Exalt you. We love you. Bless your people in this house. Bless your people that are coming. Bless your people that are tuning in. Bless your people across the globe. Bless your house, God. Bless in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Come on, give God a praise in this place. Come on, worship him. Give him praise. Come on, let that hand go and shout. Come on out of your belly. Let God hear you this morning. Whatever I need. Whatever I need to do, to get to you, I will, 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 I will
say, I need more. I need more. Lift your hands to the Lord this morning, everybody, and say, I need more of you. I need more of you. Worship Him, yes. Come on, whatever, whatever, whatever. The scripture says, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto our God with a victorious voice, which means a voice of triumph. And if you got victory, give him a victorious praise and a victorious worship out of your spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Turn to somebody next to you and say, I don't know about you. But I came to really get my praise on. I didn't been through it all week long. Dealt with a little stuff here and there all week long. Discouragement came in and tried to take me out. The enemy came in like a flood, but God built a standard. So I didn't come here to play no games. I came to get my praise on. If you came in here to rejoice and get glad in this building, I dare you to give him some real praise in this place right now. Give him some praise out of your spirit. I dare you to pray. Celebrate the King of Kings in this building. Praise in here. Is there anybody that came to praise your king? say what is this all about you don't have to be hit with a supernatural hand like a puppet and then he moves you like this but what you're doing right now is saying God I'm celebrating I'm celebrating my victory I'm celebrating what you've done already and I'm celebrating what you get ready to do and if you got in a spirit of expectancy and you're believing God to do what he told you he's going to do. I dare somebody to give him 30 more seconds of real praise in this building right now. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Slap two or three high five and say there's victory in your praise. There's joy when you praise. I get joy when I just think about what he's done for me. Have God done anything for anybody in the building? So I say he's too he's been, he's been too good. Touch somebody and say, you haven't been through enough yet. Uh-huh. Because if you've been through it and you made it out of it, you wouldn't be sitting there looking funny. Yeah. I'm talking to somebody that been through the storm and the rain, but through the grace and the love of God, you made it out. And you, it should have killed you. It should have destroyed you. It should have caused you to kill yourself. But because of the love and the grace and the mercy of the Lord, yeah. You know 
I should have been you, but it missed you and ended up hitting somebody else. You better. Yes, God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, Father, I thank God. you for loving me. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I Come on, thank you. praise him. Lift up hands all over this building. Welcome to Spirit Field Family Church. Where we are not ashamed to praise God. If you were looking for a calm church, sorry, I'm sorry, forgive us. Because we get our praise on up in here. We we didn't been through two months to be quiet. I I'm sorry. There's a time and a season. There's a time to be quiet, and there's a time to let it out. And this is that praise moment where you let it out. I need somebody to shout with a shout. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome to Spiritfield Family Church. And we welcome the Holy Spirit to do what he does. Come on. Hallelujah. How many just love him? How many love him? Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want you to hug somebody next to you. And I want you to tell them, say, get ready for your breakthrough. Tell them, say, if you haven't felt it yet, it's happening. It's going to happen by the time this service is over. Prophesy. And tell them everything that's on your life will be completely broken by the authority of God. And by the authority of the Holy Spirit. It's done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody shout, I'm blessed. Tell them, say, I'm blessed. And I may know God has graced us and blessed us. Amen. If you're here for the first time, is this your first time, I want you to just stand up so we can see you, love on you, and acknowledge you. We don't want to expose you, but we want to just love you. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Look around you. If you see them, you know how we are, Spirit Field. We hug, we love, we encourage. We are so excited to see you here today. All of you that have come today, we want you to know that when you come to Spirit Field Family Church, it is just that. We believe in letting the Holy Spirit move, and we believe in being family. So on the count of three, all church families say welcome to the family. One, two, three. We welcome you. Amen. Thank you so much for coming out to fellowship with us. Amen. Just a couple of quick announcements. Amen. Announcement number one, coming up, we're going to be having this week, this Friday night at 7 o'clock, this Friday night at 7 o'clock, which is the 2nd of May, new members class, volunteers class, and baptism class. We need you to come out to that. Why is that? Because we need you active. We need you involved. We need you connected. The Bible says, in the book of Ephesians chapter number 4, it tells us that when every member of the body does their share, the body begins to grow. And it is God's design that his body continues to increase. He wants everybody to be saved. It is his desire. He says it's not his will that any should perish but all come to repentance. And that happens when every one of us are active, doing the work and the will of God in church, at home, as well as in the community. God's word begins to manifest and people get touched, healed, saved, and delivered, and the body of Christ begins to grow. So come out to new members, volunteers, and baptism class. Come out and receive what God has in store for you. Amen? Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Also coming in the month of June, just a couple of quick announcements for you. Number one, we're going to have a day of Pentecost service. June the 9th, that's a Monday night, June the 9th at 7 p.m. We're going to be in here praising, praising, worshiping, and enjoying the presence of God. Amen. And we're expecting God to do some great things. Amen. It is basically, if you know anything about Pentecost, it's 50 days after resurrection. So 50 days after the resurrection is the day of Pentecost where Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4, it says that the Holy Spirit filled those that were in the upper room. The 120 were filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we're going to have an awesome time. Somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. We're also this month having a couples conference. So if you are married or you are wanting to be married and you're with someone, you're dating, we want you to get involved with this couples conference. Amen. Couples Conference is going to be June 25th through 27th. 
and it is only $15 a person. All right? It's going to be a three-day awesome three-night event. We're going to have great awesome time, and we're also going to have for that Friday night, Michael and Regina Winans is coming back to the church. Come on, somebody. So the Winans will be here, amen, and they'll be singing, and they're going to be in full concert, amen. Even though we had a great time at the first one, but they will be in full concert right here on that Friday night. So you don't want to miss this opportunity. See Sister Diane on your way out. Support the vision of that. Amen. Again, that will be June 25th through 27th at 7 o'clock nightly. And then also Christian Education at 10 a.m. on the next day, Saturday the 28th, and we'll be having a graduation. We're also giving scholarships away for those who are in high school, graduating from high school to college. So we're going to give small scholarships. We're going to do our best, but we want to make sure our, ch our young people are are being blessed as they transition. Is that all right? Somebody say amen. We need you to get involved and get connected. Children's Church needs your support. Children's Church needs your support. So if there's any teachers in this room that have credentials or you just love children and you all right, we need you to get involved with the Children's Church ministry. Amen. They need teachers. They need aides. They need helpers. Amen. So on your way out, see the Get Connected table. Sister Marion will be right there getting you involved and getting you connected. Give God a praise for those announcements. And my wife is going to give us one more announcement. Amen. All right, women of purpose. Woo! All right. Every Tuesday night, we meet at 7 o'clock p.m. And because there are five Tuesdays in this month, we're doing something really special this Tuesday coming in. We're actually having a Girlfriend's Cafe. Well, what is that, Lady Hall? Well, let me tell you, okay? Girlfriend's Cafe is when we actually all get together and we just go out and have a good time in God, amen? So this week, we'll be spending Tuesday night at the Cinemark the Theater. We'll be seeing the movie, Heaven is for Real, amen? Man, we already know this, amen? But we're going to have a grand time in God. Um, at the same table that Sister Marion is going to be at, we'll also have a women's ministry representative. So if you guys want to get more information about that, go ahead to that table, and we'll have a rep out there to give you more information. Thank you so much, Spirit-filled family. Amen. Give God one more big praise for the announcements. Hallelujah. And at this time, what we're going to have now is a special, um, we're actually going to have the offering first. Amen. So give God a praise for that. As the officers come at this time, we're going to collect the Lord's offering. And how many know that it is?
verses 18 through verse 26. 18 through 26 is where I'm going to be reading from. Once again, Acts chapter 20, verses 18 through 26. When you have it, say amen. If you don't have it, we do have it up on the screen for you to read along with us and follow. The Bible declares and it says, and when they had come to him, he said to them, you know from the first day that I came to Asia in what manner I always lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials, which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews. How I kept back nothing that was helpful to you, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And see, now I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy. And the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And indeed now I know that you all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God will see my face no more. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your living word. Your word is love. Your word is life. Your word is truth. I pray that you will speak your word of light to me, through me, and for me. Guide my tongue, O Lord, to speak only the oracles of God. Father, we bind and we bind every evil thought, imagination, and spirit that comes against this word. Satan, get out of this place. The Lord rebuke you now in Jesus' name. You have no power. You have no authority. You have no dominion. And we command you to flee right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray now, Lord, that you would have your way. We throw off the red carpet saying, breathe into us, move into us, have thine own way Holy Spirit we thank you Lord that every heart is open every mind is open and every spirit is ready to receive your word so Lord pour out your word in this place and we thank you for it now in Jesus name we give you praise amen and amen before you sit down turn to your neighbor and say I shall not be moved come on turn to somebody else on the other side and say I shall not be moved you may have your seats in the presence of the everlasting father amen I shall not be moved. If you shall not be moved, give God a real praise in this atmosphere right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches us, amen, that while Paul was on his missionary journey, he was actually on the third missionary journey at this time. And the Bible tells us that while he was on his third missionary journey, that he came into a specific land. And when he came into the land, he called for the elders of Ephesus. Anybody doing your research about the name elder? An elder is what you would call one who oversees, an overseer of the church, in which God anointed Paul as an apostle to train up elders to oversee the work that God has delegated unto him. But when he came into this land, he came and he called them, and when he called them, he called them for these main reasons. Reason number one is to encourage them, to build them, to encourage them, to let them know that there are still things that need to be done. And reason number two is to encourage that they fulfill the destiny and the work that God has delegated unto them. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, there is work that has to be done. It is very important, amen, that you do what God has commissioned and what God has called you to do. But in order for you to do that, you have to remain encouraged. I remind, I'm reminded of the scripture where the Bible says that God spoke to Joshua and he told Joshua to be strong and to be very courageous. If you're going to fulfill all that God has in store for you, you must be strong and you must be courageous. You must have faith and continue on to do what God has called you to do. Somebody say hallelujah. One of the things that Paul did very, very well is to teach people not only through the word that he preached, was to teach people also by the example that he lived. And the first statement he says unto the elders, he says, you remember the life that I showed among you. You remember the life that I lived in your presence. When you study that word live or to live, it means to live a lifestyle that represents God. And Paul was telling them, listen to me, I lived a lifestyle that represented God in your presence. 
I was not the kind of minister that only told you one thing, but then I lived a lifestyle that was contrary to what I told you. When Paul was speaking to them, he told them to watch this now. He told them to follow the example of the life that I walked in. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, this is Paul's demonstration of what he believed a lifestyle in Christ should be like. The Bible tells us that in, 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 in Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you. Shake somebody's hand and say, Neighbor, I'm pleading with you right now. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. He said, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way you are to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know what God's will is for your life, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Paul, speaking to the Romans, told him, this is what I believe that a lifestyle in Christ is really about. It is a lifestyle of holiness. It is time for the church to be ye holy, for we serve a holy God. It is time for the church to truly represent God the way God desires to be represented. Do I got a witness in this house? Paul said, I didn't just talk about it. I didn't just say anything about it. I lived the way God want me to live. My lifestyle was a lifestyle of holiness. My lifestyle was seeking the will and the word of God to know what God's purpose plan is in my life. My lifestyle was about doing what is right and turning away from all that is wrong. Paul told them that this is what I believe in my heart a lifestyle in Christ is about. Living a lifestyle that pleases him. Living a lifestyle that fulfills his perfect will. Living a lifestyle that represents him well. Ask your neighbor next to you, are you representing? Y'all get all deep up in here. We need to represent Christ. And the thing is, he said, I live this way among you, but Paul was the kind of man that didn't only live that way in front of folks. He lived right in the closet. <laughs> he lived right when nobody was there. He lived right when everybody was in his presence. He lived for God, and he didn't care who was there. He didn't care what they said. He didn't care how they looked at him. And it's time for the church to stop being so timid and intimidated by how the world is looking at us or how men will treat us and start saying, God, it's time for me to do what you say do. Somebody say hallelujah. Slap two or three high five and say, God is calling us to righteousness. So in Acts 20 and verse 18, he says, you know that I live right. You know that I live a lifestyle of holiness. But the next thing he said is not only did I live a lifestyle that represented God, that conducted myself and did the things that God wanted me to do, but I also served the Lord. Ask somebody to say, neighbor, are you serving God? Get this. If you're not serving God, you're going to serve something or someone. Because it's in our DNA to serve. We were created to serve. And, and, and when you talk about serving, that means, that means to use your gifts, your talents, your abilities to meet the need of another person. So either you're going to use what God gave you to meet the need of God. And what does God want? Souls. He's hungry for people. And he want to win people back to the cross. And therefore, he's looking for a few good and faithful servants who will sacrifice so that people can get the same eternal life that you got. So he said, I served the Lord. I gave up my stuff, I sacrificed, I did what God wanted me to do. One of the third elements to worship is to serve. And you're not genuinely worshiping until you are genuinely serving. But it is not only to serve, 
But Paul was big about serving with the right attitude. Mm. Tell somebody, say, you got to have the right spirit. You got to have the right spirit when you do this. You can't be serving and have an attitude. You can't be serving and rolling necks. You can't, you can't be serving. Come on, somebody. Y'all too deep in this church this morning. Tell somebody, say, if you're going to serve, do it with a good spirit. Because Paul said, not only did I serve the Lord, but I did it in all humility. I stayed humble while I did it. I didn't serve and walk around with a conceited spirit like, mm. And when I say serve, I mean serving from anywhere to the church all the way to your house you live in, to the kids you got, to the spouse you have, to the job you work at. When I say serve, I'm talking universal servant. I'm talking about the kind of servant that serves and say, I am God's servant. No matter where I am, who I'm dealing with, what I'm dealing with, I belong to God. And he called me to bring myself low and to be a blessing and help instead of sitting there being angry at everybody. You can't serve nobody with an attitude that's wrong. So I serve the Lord with all humility. Somebody say humility. Say it again. Humble yourself. Why? Because pride always mess up your service. Pride will mess up your service. Paul's definition of a true servant who walked in the spirit of humility is actually revealed in Romans 12, 9 through 14. The first thing he says is, don't just pretend to love others. Tell somebody and say, stop being fake. I don't like hanging around fake folks. <laughs> I love you though. I just good. Come on, man, come on. He said, don't pretend like you love me. <laughs> Paul was not a person that wanted to fake and front and put up some fake phony baloney attitude. He was not the kind of man of God that wanted to wear a mask in front of folks. Hallelujah. Spirit feel gonna have a, a, a church full of servants who's gonna be real. Come on here. When they hug you, you say, oh, I actually felt that. Like, for real. Like, that wasn't fake right there. Like, when you hugged me, I felt like you really care right now. Like, it's time for the church to get in a position where we don't just say, I love you, but we act like we do. We truly love people. Somebody say, stop pretending. Say, take off the mask. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Treat them like you want to be treated. If we took the love test that is in 1 Corinthians 13, I think we probably all will fail the test. Stop acting like you got so much love in you. You know we tell, come on here. Well, I'm, I'm seriously, I love everybody. I don't have a problem with anybody. I'm just, uh, uh, and then we knock on your door later on and I don't feel no love in the house. Come on here. Come on, somebody. We, we show up at the grocery store and we see you there and we like, who is this? This is, a, oh my goodness, how you doing? Have you ever did that? <laughs> when you walk up on somebody and then all of a sudden after they see you, they be like, oh, oh, oh. Praise God! Then they become prophets. Touch somebody and say, Maybe if you're living right all the time, you ain't got to act like it. You ain't got to change when somebody show up. You ain't got to act different when if somebody come in the room. It's like them teenagers, my teenagers. We be doing all the, oh, I show up, oh. Touch somebody and say, if you got to do it in secret, don't do it at all. And I'm talking about all of us because we all got some hidden agendas that need to get exposed so we can get a real breakthrough so that real love can penetrate because wherever there is genuine love, that means there is a genuine God in the midst of the people. So don't act like you love them. Love them for real. He said, hate what is wrong. And then he says, what? Hold tightly to the things that are good. We need to start letting go of those things that we know that are defiling our character. 
Bible says evil company corrupts good habits. If you know it's going to mess you up, stay away from things that's going to hinder your progress in life and cleave to things that's going to take you higher in Christ. Do I got about two or three real praises in the room? He says love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. A true servant don't mind honoring his or her fellow neighbor. People who are only seeking to serve self seeks to receive honor, and if I don't get honored, I'm leaving so I can find my honor. But a person who's like Jesus says, I'm here to serve, not to be served. Come on, somebody. And because I'm here to serve and not to be served, then I'm going to represent well. Therefore, I don't mind honoring a person because that person is my friend, my brother, my sister. It don't matter. When we start learning to participate and love and elevate one another instead of hating one another and getting angry at each other, then God can start taking us to the next place. Somebody give him a real radical praise. In honor one another. Never be lazy. Somebody say, stop being lazy. <laughs> mm. How you going to go somewhere in God and you don't want to step out? He said, never be lazy. I don't want you to become lazy, but I want you to work hard and serve who? The Lord enthusiastically. When he says that, he's saying, I don't want you to just serve. Serve with some life in you. Tell somebody, say, if you're going to serve, do it like you like doing it, like for real. <laughs> don't do it with attitude. Don't do it looking funny at folks. Don't do it smirking your lips. Come on, somebody. Do it like you love what you do. Come on, somebody. I mean, do it like, don't go home to who you say you love and go home with attitude like you don't want to be there. Have you ever went to a job every day and you just, oh, I just can't stand this job. I don't want to be here. I don't like this job. Come on. You got to look. You better have a better attitude while you do that if you want God to bless you with the greater. Because he blessed only those who are faithful over the few things and faithful when they are tested. And so if I'm a faithful man and or a woman of God while I'm in the den, I will be blessed with greater things later in my future. But it starts with a good attitude of gratitude and say, God, I'm going to serve you, but I'm going to serve you like I love what I do. I don't like dry service. I don't like service with complaints. It's a horrible feeling when somebody make you lunch, give you a cheeseburger. I mean, it's reality. If I go to a restaurant and they give me a plate of food and they just throw it at me like, here, take this stuff. I'm not coming back to that place. Y'all better stop playing up in here. And that's why people don't want to deal with folks because people don't know how to serve one another with a good attitude and a good spirit. If you want, look, this is my vision in Spiritfield Family Church that when anybody walk in the door of this place, you walk in and you see like 50,000 smiles. Figuratively speaking, I'm talking about when you walk in the building from the parking lot, the, 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 the attendance is like, Hi! Do you not know that if you start operating in the supernatural and operating in the love of God, that by the time, and I told my leadership team this, I said, by the time they even hear the message on Sunday morning, they would have already received the breakthrough. Drive on the parking lot. Good morning. Like, who? That's what was that? I was driving in depressed. That dude made me laugh with that funny face. He just, <laughs> thank you so much. And then get out of the car, coming to the front door, and there's another one. Hello! Come on, somebody. I mean, by the time you get through the other door, now you're in the sanctuary, you got two at the door saying, good morning. And then the praises are up in the pulpit, and they sing and sing, oh, I will bless the Lord. And by the time the word touch you, you say, I can't help but to walk out of this building like I just had a revival and I'm going home to take my family back, take my stuff back, take my life back. Say, so you have some enthusiasm while you're doing it. It's boring.
ring when you walk in. I'm using the church, but this is period. In life, you walk in, and, and you're like, hey, good morning. How are you feeling good? You walk in, how you doing? Good to see. And that's everybody like, come on, somebody. You, they get mad at you because you jolly. Like, good morning. I heard about Sparrowfield. They're off the chain up here. And the person you grieve like, I'm not going to want to get delivered. I don't think I'm going to get delivered if you're not delivered when I walk into church. I mean, come on. I better stop playing in here. I want a people of God who not only say I serve him, but I got some life in me. It's funny. Because I told the, told, the, told the earlier service, I said, you know, why is it that when people got saved, they lost their enthusiasm? I wish I had my musicians up here. We would we, bump a track right now. It's, a, it's an interesting thing that in the world, the world bumps, jumps, pumps, shouts, moves, do all of this stuff. I mean, you know what you, come on, so I'm not going to say, I'm just, you know what it used to be like. I'm going to just say it that way for somebody in there. You know what you used to be like. Walk into the party like, what's up? Let's do this. B was bumping. <laughs> You're walking in like, whoo! <laughs> then you get folks that get saved and come into church like this. And when it's time to rock, folks doing it. No life. Wait a minute. I thought we were the church. If anything, the party should be liver here. It should be thumping here. It, I'm going to say it like this. The beat should be banging up in here. Somebody say Hallelujah. When you come into this place, it should be rocking. You should be bumping and praising and moving them hands and shouting and jumping and doing your praise party. <laughs> Folks, come to church, get all deep. And that's why, when, and I'm not saying be the world, so don't get it twisted because I don't want no world in this in here. If you're going to jump, jump right. Change your jump to the right jump. <laughs> you got to have life when you're doing God's work. That's the only way you're going to get to the people in this land is they looking for somebody who's going to be genuinely real. Somebody say Hallelujah. I was talking about our kids. We all on the face. Look, turn up. Let's turn up. I had to sit there and try to figure that out. Like, turn up, turn up what? <laughs> I, I read it like, what they turning up? Now, me, me, I'm 35. My daughter's 18, 19 now. So when she said turned up, at first I was like, turn up. No, turn it down. What you going to turn up? I'm going to be turning up the music so loud. I, I mean, it's, it's interesting how you get older and then the music gets too loud. When you were younger, you had the subwoofers in the bone. Boom, 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 boom. Stop. Boom, 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 boom. I said, what are they going to turn up? What are they going to turn up? Then I had to do some research to find out this turn up. That means to act up. That means let loose. Let the party go. Let do this. I said, oh. Well, why folks don't know how to turn it up for God? Slap somebody a high five and say, we about to turn it up for Jesus up in here. We about to turn it up so big up in here that we're going to chase demons up out of here. We're going to turn up our praise. We're going to turn up our worship. We're going to turn up the spirit. We're going to do what we do best, and that's let everything we got in our belly, out of our belly. We're going to make some noise and get... Touch somebody and say, I still got a praise. I just changed my praise. 
I used to be in the world praising demons, but now I'm in the church praising God. I used to turn it up with the devil. Now I'm cut loose for God. I used to rock with the enemy. Now I'm rolling with God. Somebody say hallelujah. Talk to somebody and say, if you're going to do it, do it right. Hallelujah. Tell somebody say, don't stop dancing. Just change the way you dance and change your partner. You used to back it up. Now step it up. Somebody say hallelujah. Do I got a witness? I'm talking about holiness in the church. But I'm talking about being holy but using the gifts and talents that God has given you to be compelling for the presence of God and bring people to Christ. It's time to keep going and do what God tell you to do. There's too much work to be done than to sit around here and get boring. Do I got a witness? Grab somebody by the hand and say, neighbor, we're getting ready to turn this place upside down in the spirit. I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. I, it's almost as if I can sense the spirit of God is saying that that's what I want. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't you get saved and lose life. If anything, you should teach the world how to really party. You should teach the world how to really go down. You should teach the world what it's really like. This is what it's really like. In the world, you don't have a clue. In the church, this is what we do. We do it the way God say do it. We live the way God say live. We worship the way God say worship. Somebody say hallelujah. Paul's definition of a servant is not only somebody who know how to do this with enthusiasm, but he goes on and he tells the people in Rome, and he says, rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. A servant don't quit. They don't change partners because the partner ain't lined up just yet. They don't bounce around because people are not doing what I think they should be doing yet. Paul said, I did this thing and I did it with patience. That's why I say you need some patience. You got to be patient and you got to patiently endure while you're dealing with it. If you want to see the fruit of your labor, you got to keep laboring. I preach to the preacher. If you want to see real victory, real healing, real deliverance, a real breakthrough, you got to endure. You got to press through. You got to have patience. The Bible says imitate those who through patience and endurance inherited the promise. If you want a real breakthrough, you got to be consistent. You got to be diligent. You got to be patient. And you got to keep on keeping on. Tell somebody say be patient while you're going through. And keep praying until you come out of it. Because the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous is a fire and is a valid much. God will do what you never thought can be done. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Impatient people miss harvests. Why waste all my energy? Have you ever, have you, have you ever been sitting in the parking lot waiting for a parking space? And you sitting there and you're like, okay, it's about to go down. There's too many folks in here and I'm, I know this is my spot right here. This is it. And it's about to go down. I know it's about to happen. And you can start looking at the clock. Oh, this is getting on my nerve. Oh, they're taking forever right here. And as soon as you say, somebody else can say, have you ever been through I've been through that. I, ooh. That's the worst feeling to have just drove off. And somebody pop out and somebody snatch that spot. Touch somebody and say, be patient. They were sitting in the car for a minute. But if you would have had a little more patience, they would have pulled out and you would have pulled into your blessing. 
But because you didn't have no patience while dealing with the trial and the circumstance, you let that thing pull out and you let somebody else take your spot. Be patient at home and don't you let nobody take your house. Be patient at work. Don't you let somebody get your job. Be patient in the church. Don't you let somebody get your breakthrough. I got a real praiser in the building. He said, be patient in trouble. Somebody say, be patient. Say it again, be patient. Be patient in trouble, keep praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. This is Paul's definition of serving the Lord with humility. Seeing a need and meeting the need. There's too many opportunities in this church for everyone to get involved in. There's a lot of space for you. Come on here. I often tell you, I say, you know, the vision that God has put on Spiritfield Family Church and the DNA that God has blessed us with, the, 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 this, this, this congregation is the leadership team. God's called us to go global, not just to be here. So you, you have to get in place. Y'all not talking? Come on here. You have to get in place. You got to get in position. And the first step of serving, before we can serve out there, we should be doing something at home first. And something in the building at church second, then I could deal with the folks out there. If I can't manage me, manage my house, then manage the house of God, how can I manage a soul who don't know nobody? Do I got a real praise in the building? Slap two or three high five and say, there's work that needs to be done. Say it again, there's work that needs to be done. Therefore, when God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. <laughs> As I told the other service, I said, you know what? You know, while they calling you, you home. But you know they need something. So because you know they need something, you act like you're not home. Come on here. Ignore buttons. I know when you push ignore on me. And don't blame it on a bad zone. Don't act like you was going through the hill. Come on, somebody. You didn't get my text? Well, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was going through the mountain, you know, so my phone dropped, and I was like, uh, no, if you see the need, meet the need, and don't ask questions. This is God's plan. Why? Because I meet your needs. I'm technically meeting the need of my father. For as I have done to love the least among them, I have done unto the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. He said, I went through all of these things, going back to Acts 20. He says, I served the Lord with humility, but I did it under great trial and great tears. How many know that while you're doing the work, you will be tested? You will go through a trial. You will deal with situa situations, and tribulations will come against you. But Paul made up in his mind, though I went through it all, I did not keep anything back that was beneficial. Touch somebody and say, don't hold back. One of the things we do as a body of Christ is as soon as we start going through some stuff, we start holding back what God wants us to release. Come on, somebody. There's somebody holding back at home because you was tested. There's somebody holding back at work because you went through a test. There's some of us that are holding back in church because we went through some stuff at another one. Slap two or three high five and say, I can't hold back. I can't hold back. Tell them again, I can't hold back. Because holding back not only does it limit or hinder what God is trying to do through you and in your life, but it causes other people to miss out what God is trying to give you to give to them. You can never experience the miracle if you want to do it all yourself, to yourself, for yourself. But it's not until you learn in your mind and say, God, I'm willing to release everything I can release to benefit the kingdom of God. That's when God say, I'll give seed to people like that. It's those who desire to be a help that God gives more and gives greater blessings to. Is there anybody that has made up your mind you're not going to hold back anymore? Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. He said, I didn't hold back. Somebody say, don't hold back. Say it again, don't hold back. He said, I didn't hold anything back that was helpful to you, but proclaimed it to you and taught it publicly and even from house to house. He said, you know what? I taught you no matter where we was at. I made sure I represented no matter where we was at. 
He said, I don't care if I was at your house, I still represented God. I don't care if we went to the movies, I represented God. I don't care if I was locked in a hotel room by myself, I represent God. I don't care what the enemy say, I still choose to represent God. He said, I didn't hold nothing back. It don't matter where I was at, I still was consistent, I was diligent, and he says, I testified to the Jews and also to the Greek, and I told them, repent, turn to God, and put your faith in Jesus. He said, not only did I not hold back from you, but I preached the truth, no matter who was listening, and no matter who got mad, and no no matter who came and who went, I still told the truth. And it is time for the church to have a real, genuine, repentant heart and serve the God of truth and the God of salvation. People come to church. We love to hear them faith teaching sermons. Have faith in God and the anointing is going to touch you right there. And when the anointing touch you, finances are going to start growing through your ears. I promise you, prophesy to you right now that your shoes are going to start glistening. And I see pearls and I see diamonds all in your hair. And then the church get all excited. <laughs> Did you see that? We be looking every morning <laughs> to see if we're going to have some pearls in our head. But we don't want a truth when it comes to saying this. You need to stop smoking the weed. You need to stop drinking alcohol. You need to stop fornicating. You need to stop committing the adultery. You need to stop. You will get the blessing with your name on it. But these are the things you got to stop doing in order for the blessing to get to you. If you don't remove the hindrance, the blessing cannot follow. So what I got to do is say no to the devil and yes to God so that I can move in the blessing, favor, and power of the Lord my God. I need somebody that want a real blessing to get Give him a real prop. Somebody say hallelujah. Shake your neighbor hand and say, God got a blessing with your name on it. But if you want that blessing, you got to get in position. You can't walk around here still living the way you want to live, doing what you want to do, acting the way you want to act. It's time to do God. Live for God. Worship God. Serve the God of salvation so he can bless you. He said, I taught repentance. I taught repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, I did. But if you notice, repentance was first. Repentance was first. And the reason why that's very important, when Jesus went out to preach, his first sermon was this. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Kingdom of heaven means God's presence and blessing and benefit that come with his presence. But it starts with repent before the kingdom can come. And if you want the blessings, favor, and the power of God to come into your life, it's time for the church to say no more to me, no more to my will, no more to my flesh, no more to this stuff. Why? Because it's making me all angry. It's depressing. It's stressing me out. So I choose to turn to God. Do I have anybody that will turn to God? Shake your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, there's something that's getting ready to happen. There's a miracle coming your way, but it starts with you coming God's way. You got to make the first step and say, Lord, I'm giving it all, sacrificing my all, coming back to you so that you can do what you have to do. He said, I'll testify to everybody about repentance and putting your faith in God. But then he says, and I can now I'm bound by the Holy Ghost. Tell somebody, say, when the Spirit got a hold of you, <laughs> you can't help but to do it. He said, I've come bound by the Spirit. And he says, the reason why he was bound by the Spirit is because he was on his way to Jerusalem, paraphrasing, but the Holy Ghost revealed through many different messengers that when he got there, he was going to deal with prison and persecution. So Paul made up in his mind, none of these things going to move me. Touch somebody and say, neighbor, you got to stop being moved. Every time somebody come at you, stop being moved. Don't let somebody get you off course. Don't let somebody discourage you. Don't let somebody tell you you can't make it. Don't let somebody tell you you're not the head. Don't let somebody tell you you're not the tail. Now, I want you to get something. Wait a minute, get this. Because in this text, 
Many preachers have preached and said, you know what, Paul shouldn't have went because the Holy Spirit said he was going to go through this. And because he went through and did that, he ended up in chains. I'm going to tell you the truth about that matter. God told him to go. That's why he said, I was bound by the Spirit to go into Jerusalem. Now catch this. Being bound by the Spirit means he's pulling me into something that's very uncomfortable. But I got to get it done. And I can't be moved by what's making me uncomfortable. I can't be discouraged because I know trials are going to come when it comes. I can't be mad and leave my family because they got some stuff going on. If God called me to be at this house, in this church, in this city, in this town, in this place, then I don't care what it comes with. I will do what the Lord told me to do. Shout, none of these things move me. Grab somebody by the hand, snatch them out of their seat, and say, neighbor, it's time to stop being moved. Stop letting the devil discourage you. Stop letting men discourage you. Stop letting looks discourage you. Stop letting pride discourage you. Stop letting lack discourage you. It's time to stop being moved. Open up your mouth. Give God a praise and know that he's a... Somebody say hallelujah. Shake your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I'm going through it right now, but I still got a testimony. I'm dealing with a test, but I got a money with it. Somebody say, hallelujah. Shake your neighbor hand and say, we can't quit. We will not quit. We're going to keep on keeping on. We're going to keep on pressing on. There is still work to be done. There is still miracles need to be performed. And we're going to press through the mess so that we can get blessed. I believe God. He said, none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself. Tell somebody, say, you don't even belong to you. So stop trying to hold on to you. You try to hold on to your life, the Bible says you'll lose it. You let your life go in the hands of Christ, you will gain it. It's time for us to stop trying to hold on to everything and start holding on to God. He said, I don't even belong to myself. He said, I, and I made up my mind. That, ooh. He made up his mind that he did not belong to himself. He said, I, my life is not mine. So why am I stressing out over it? Now catch this. The Bible says that when God was dealing with Abraham concerning his son, the Bible says he took his son up to the top of the mountain and was getting ready to sacrifice his son. All of a sudden, the voice of God comes through the bush. And, 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 and in the midst of that, he, he had a lamb right there. And God said, don't touch him. He said, why? Because I have provided. Now, now when the Lord say, I have provided, this is what it means. God provides for himself. So anything that belongs to God, he takes care of. So Paul's saying, my life don't belong to me. So you know what Paul was saying? God's got me. <laughs> I ain't got to worry about a house to live in. I ain't got to worry about a car to drive. I ain't got to worry about a friend to keep me. I ain't got to worry about things in my life. Why? Because I know that my life is in the hand of God. And since I belong to Jesus, he's going to keep me. Now unto him who's able to keep me from falling and to declare me faultless. Paul saying in closing, he says, I don't count my life as to myself, dear to myself. Why? So that I can finish my race. And I don't want to only finish it, but I want to finish it with joy. And the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Plain and simple, I want to go out with a bang. If I'm going out, I'm going out with a bang. If I'm going out, I want my testimony to be this. That was a man of God. That was a woman of God. That is somebody who trusted God and who endured hardship like a good soldier. I want to be like Abel, not like Cain. If I'm going out, I'm going out and my blood still speaks. I'm going out with the lasting fruit. I want something that remains. And Paul made up his mind, I'm going to finish the course. And if you're going to finish at home, if you are going to finish in your careers, and if you're going to finish in your ministry life, you cannot be moved. Don't let people move you. Don't let circumstances move you. 
Don't let attitudes move you. Somebody say, I shall not be moved. Give him some worship in the building. Yeah, God. I shall not be moved. So Paul said, I want to keep preaching the gospel. And the last thing he said in verse 26 is, I'm innocent of all blood. Another version of scripture would say it like this. I am faultless when it comes to my service. I did what I needed to do. And as Paul was leaving the elders of Ephesus, he said this statement. If anybody is spiritually dead, it's not my fault. I'm closing with this statement because I had a dream a couple of nights ago, about a week ago. And in this dream, we were all coming together as a church. And we started cleaning the church. We had a, had a nice building, a new building. And, but it was in ruin and it needed, it needed work. How many know that everything you do for God is going to take some work? Yeah. Come on, it takes work, it takes work. But we were working on the new building. And we were cleaning and there was a bunch of big black ba uh, bags sitting there. And, and some bags, there were, there were purses and shoes and things that we were looking like, we'll keep this stuff and we'll give it to those in need. And, then in the other bags, there was a bunch of trash in the bags. And we said, okay, we're going to dump this stuff out. And as we were going through the church, cleaning, washing the church, feeling good, we were singing praises. We were like, yes, God, we are excited. But the closer we got to the back of the church, the closer we got to the back, there was a stench that started to come through the church. So some of the guys working with me, I'm smelling, like, what, what's, what's that? And I look at one dude like, something wrong with your boy? You know? You didn't did something? What's wrong with you, right? And so we just kept cleaning. And I said, come on, let's keep on. And I got to the back wall of the church. There was a little hole there. And it, through that hole, the stench was coming through the hole. So I pushed the hole. Part of the wall fell down. Pushed it again. Another part of the wall fell down. So I just start kicking it in. Boom, boom, break this wall down. We broke the wall down. And when you went into the wall, there was a hidden... Uh, I would call it an underground uh, storage or an underground chamber, underground place. Uh, um, and in that, in that basement, that's what it was, thank you. And in that underground basement, there was sewage all over the ground and there was mildew all over the walls. And I looked at the people next to me and I said, let's go in here and let's clean this up. Then I woke up. And after I woke up, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, the building represents my people because the church is not the building. The church is the congregation. And he says, and you're doing the work among the congregation. But he says, there's a lot of hidden stuff in the hearts of my congregation. And he says, son, it's time for the church to tear the walls down that's holding back the stuff that don't belong in the heart. And he says, when the wall comes down, it might smell a little bit. It might not look a little nice. But he said, if they would cleanse it and wash it, it will be made white as snow. It's time for the church to stop holding back. If you got some stuff in your spirit, in your life, some sin and some weight that so easily beset you and some unresolved issues in your heart that need to be washed out, God is saying clean house so that he can bless you. So I want somebody that want the wall to come down and that want the house to be swept and want the presence of God to walk in and dwell in the midst of your life. Meet me at this altar and don't let a thought keep you back. Don't let an imagination hinder you. Don't let a devil stop you. I want you to meet me at this altar right now and shame the devil right now. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, keep clapping. They're coming. right there that's it right there this is what it's about right here this is what I believe real church is about 
This is my faith. Real worship is about healing, deliverance, salvation, and true freedom. From flow and cry. Come on, come to Jesus. It's great for me. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Those of you that have come, some still coming. Come on, they're still coming. This is what it's about. I don't want to be the kind of church that people come to church, do cartwheels, go home, and still be bound. My desire in Christ is when somebody walk into this building, they walk out of this building free, filled with the Holy Spirit and feeling the love of God and say, wow, I just had a real encounter with God. I just had a serious breakthrough from the presence of God. That's what I believe church is really about. True freedom and true deliverance. No more faking. No more fronting. No more doing me. Now it's doing Jesus so that God can really do what he needs to do in me. I tried it my way. And my way has constantly failed me. So now I'm tired of doing this and going through these things. I want a real breakthrough. I want to be steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord. Yes, God. So those of you that have come to this altar, lift your hands to God like you're ready for it right now. Because this is a step of faith. Thank you, Lord. Those of you in the audience, stretch your hands towards them and have faith with them. Because God is in the room right now and he's ready to do something great. Oh yes, great. I'm talking great. I'm talking that when you leave this altar, something is going to be turned. When you leave this altar, something is going to be shifted. When you leave this altar, you're going to have a different attitude and a different perspective and a different focus and a different desire. This is your moment. This is your season. This is your time for your breakthrough from your God. God loves you. He cares for you. And he's ready to restore unto you all that the devil stole from you. And you're taking the right step right now to get what God has in store. So I want everyone right here to say this out of your heart with a sincere heart. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for all of my sins. Coming in my heart, save my soul. Wash me with your blood, white as snow. Create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a right spirit. Holy Spirit, take over my life. Live in me. Lead me. Guide me. Direct me. Heal me from all pain, all hurt and fill me with your presence and your love in jesus name now say satan you're under my feet you lost me i belong to god i'm more than a conqueror in the name of jesus and i cast you down to the pit where you belong in jesus name amen 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 Father, I decree it that every heart that came to this altar genuinely, truthfully, readily, I pray God, meet your children right here where they need you. And may there be a completion of what you started. For he that has began a good work is faithful to complete it until Jesus comes to return. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give God a round of applause in here. altar if you need prayer from a minister or pastor stay right here with me don't leave the altar but if you don't need more additional prayer you may return to your seats but if you need more prayer stay here so the pastors and ministers can pray for you hallelujah church I want you to know something right here I am determined with every ounce of my heart to make sure that every person that walk in and out of this church receive truth deliverance, healing, and salvation, and that everyone in this building go to heaven. That's my desire. I want everyone to go. And I'm going to make sure that I do everything according to God's grace and power on my end. Like Paul said, I did my part to make sure that this thing gets done. 
I don't care what happens, I'm going to keep preaching truth because it's truth that set us free. And I want everybody free. I want everybody free. Come on. In Jesus' name. So we're going to stand and dismiss. If anybody need intercessory prayer that's in the audience, stand right in the middle aisle before you leave. Our pastors and ministers are at the altar to pray and intercede for you. And we want you to know this, that don't forget, come out Wednesday at 7 for Bible study. Friday night is new members and volunteers class. Come out and be a part of that. And we're just so excited. How many excited about the King of Kings? Hallelujah. How many know he loves us? How many know he cares for us? And he got the great things in store. He got greater things. Amen. So we're going to dismiss you in prayer. Thank you for coming out today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for grace, mercy, love, and kindness. I pray, Father, that you'll bless each and every one of my brothers and sisters that are here in this building. I thank you, Father God, that as Paul made that statement, he said, nothing is going to move me. So, Father, I thank you that my brothers and sisters in this body of faith, Lord, will be unmovable, will be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in your work. I pray, Father, that each and every one of your people will be touched by your spirit to step up in every area from their homes, even to the church, serving, loving, encouraging, and building one another on their most holy faith in the Holy Spirit. I thank you for keeping us as we leave the building, but never your presence. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hug your brother and sister on the way out. Thank you for coming to the 1115 service right here at Spirit Field Family Church.